in this video, we will solve a beautiful identity. For t greater than 0, we are asked to prove that the sum over 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to y less than or equal to t of 2 to the t minus x divided by xy is equal to the same sum of t over 0 plus up to plus t over y minus 1 divided by x times y. This notation here and there refers to summing over all possible pairs x, y that satisfy these inequalities. Before I begin with the solution, I really encourage you to try to find a more combinatoric one because that would be really interesting to see. We are going to use the fact that the sum over i going from 0 to n of n over i equals 1 plus 1 to the power of n, which is equal to 2 to the power of n. Dealing with the sum of binomial coefficients that stops at y minus 1 is way more difficult. And to do so, we are going to use the following fact, that the sum over i going from 0 to k of n over i is nothing but 2 times the sum of i going from 0 to k of n minus 1 over i minus n minus 1 over k. Why is this true? Well, we just used the identity that n over i is equal to n minus 1 over i minus 1 plus n minus 1 over i many times. To get rid of the denominators x, y, we will end up using the fact that n over i is nothing but n minus 1 over i minus 1 multiplied with n divided by i. Let us denote the difference of the left and the right side with f of t. So f of t should be uh, in words the left hand side minus the right hand side. And so what we want to prove is that f of t is equal to zero. In light of this key fact, we can relate the right side here with two times the right side for t minus one. So let's take a look at f of t minus two times f of t minus one. For y less than or equal to t minus one, we get lots of cancellations, beginning with this sum of two to the power of t minus x minus two times two to the power of t minus one minus x divided by x, y, which of course is equal to zero. And we get minus the same sum of one divided by x, y times the sum of i going from zero to y minus one of t over i minus two times the same sum, so i going from zero to y minus one of t minus one over i. By this equation, all of this, is equal to minus t minus 1 over y minus 1, all divided by x times y, which is minus t over y divided by x times t. For y equals t, there are no summons in f of t minus 1, and so we are left with the corresponding terms in f of t. We finally notice that we can write that summoned as 2 to the power of t minus 1 divided by x times t. In conclusion, this is equal to 1 divided by t, times the sum of 1 less than or equal to x less than or equal to t minus 1 of 1 divided by x times 2 to the power of t minus x minus 2 to the power of t plus 1 plus the sum of x less than or equal to y less than or equal to t minus 1 of t over y. For the final sum and in these sums, we get a plus 2 to the power of t minus t minus 2 to the power of t plus 1 divided by t squared. Unfortunately, I ran out of space on the whiteboard, but I want to make two more simplifications. First of all, we see that minus 2 to the power of t plus 1 is equal to minus the sum of 0 less than or equal to y less than or equal to t minus 1 of t over y. Thus, the summons out of this sum cancel out. If we plugged in x equal to t here, we would get a 1 divided by t squared times 2 to the power of t minus t, and this sum would be equal exactly to 2 to the power of t minus 1. In other words, this is the virtual t summand of our sum, and so we can erase this and replace the t minus 1 with a t. For showing that f always equals 0, we need to prove that this expression is also equal to 0. In other words, we now have a new combinatoric identity that we want to prove. So let us call this expression g of t. And so we get that the difference equals g of t divided by t. Note that f of 1 is equal to 1 minus 1 or 0. Therefore, by induction, it is indeed sufficient to show that this difference always equals 0. And therefore, to finish our proof, we will show that g of t equals 0. 
The reasons for why proving the combinatoric identity g of t equals zero are hard are very similar to the before mentioned reasons. And therefore, we can finish again by considering the value of g of t minus two times g of t minus one, which I will demonstrate briefly. For the first t minus one summons, we also get some cancellation. Namely, this term is equal to zero. And our blue identity tells us that the value of this difference is minus t minus one over x minus one divided by x. We can use the orange identity to conclude that this equals minus t over x divided by t. This is equal to one divided by t times one plus one minus two to the power of t plus the sum of one less than or equal to x less than or equal to t minus one of t over x. Since two equals t over zero plus t over t, all of this is equal to zero by our red identity. We can see that g of one is equal to one minus one divided by one or zero. Together with the fact that g of t equals two times g of t minus one, we can conclude by induction that indeed g of t always equals zero and therefore we are done.